yourself speak in the atmosphere prophesy to your destiny prophesy to your marriage i say prophesy to your mar this is the only time that you have lift your voice and lift your hands pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit lift your hands your hands are a platform i told you about the power of the hands your hands it's an airport where God can release a blessing. Your mouth is a trigger. Your mouth is a trigger. Open your mouth. Oh, seeds upon the throne. To the land. Oh, seeds upon the throne. Lift up your hands, oh you girls, be lifted up, you everlasting doors. 
and the King of Glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord God Almighty, the mighty man, the unchangeable changer, the covenant keeping God, the chief cornerstone, our judge, our advocate. That's his name. Worship him wherever you are. Worship him. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name you are prayed. Shout amen. Put your two hands for Jesus Christ. Clap your hands louder. More than Arsenal. More than Manchester. More than your boyfriend. More than your uncle. Clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can I see those who are having Bibles and uh, iPads? iPads. 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 Okay, can I see those who are having iPads? Where's your Bible? Where's your Bible? Where's your Bible? Where's your Bible? Where is it? Where is your Bible? Oh God of mercy. For you shall have mercy upon Zion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where is your Bible? Where is it? <sighs> Are you ready? I'll look. I don't want to invest my message to people that are not ready. Do you know what Jesus said? He said, do not curse that which is holy unto swines. That's what Jesus said. He said, do not what? Cast that which is holy unto what? Unto swines. Do you know what it means, swines? People that do not value the importance of the sermon or the teaching, they are regarded as swans. That's the reason you must be able to value teachings. Because it is through teachings that you get empowered. It is through teachings that your understanding is enlightened. Praise God. Praise God. Now today I want to teach you about, are you ready? Oh my God. My God. Remember in his discipleship class, it's all about teaching. Amen. I want to teach you how you can be blessed or how you can connect yourself to my ministry and receive a blessing. What happens on Sunday is not a service. This is a service. What I have here, this is a service. Most of my services, I have them on Tuesday and Thursday. On Sundays, I've got a lot of people. The whole church is fully packed. Everyone wants to attend to me. Everyone wants prophecy. Everyone wants deliverance. Everyone wants to be healed. So my mind cannot attend to everybody. But in these meetings, I'm able to talk to you. I'm able to empower you. I'm able to grow you up. Say, I receive. Now today, I'm talking about a, a topic or a teaching captioned, Connecting Myself. Connecting myself to fatherhood. Connecting myself to fatherhood. Connecting myself to fatherhood. Connecting myself to fatherhood. Now, let's describe or let's paraphrase or pandemon or let's elaborate on the duties, responsibilities of a man called a father. Now you must understand that being a father, it is not just the ability of procreating. Say procreating. The word to procreate, it means to give birth or to have children. Or being a father does not mean having children. We have a lot of people that have got children that are not qualified to be called fathers. So, the word father or the word fatherhood, it is a very long or broad 
word that must be explained. Now, it is possible for you to have a child. It is possible for you to have many children. But that does not make you to be a father. Because fatherhood, I repeat again, it is the act of responsibility. Number one, a father provides for his family. That's the reason the Bible says, he that does not provide for his family is worse than a non-believer. So the responsibility of a father, number one, he must provide what? Security. He must provide uh, 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 food. He must supply the things that children desire. Praise God. So we have a lot of people that are fathers by trousers. And we have a lot of people that are called mothers by breasts. I want to break it. Okay, let me put it like this. Being a woman is not having breasts. Because everyone who has breasts is regarded as a woman. But let me tell you something. Not everybody who has got breasts has the ability to breastfeed. You are not hearing this. You are not hearing this. Not everybody who has got breasts has the ability to breastfeed. Some other breasts are dry breasts. So when a child is looking for milk, there is nothing. So I repeat again, being a father, it is the act of what? Responsibility. Say responsibility. Lift your hands. Say responsibility. Come on, shout. Say responsibility. Say responsibility. You must understand that God is your father. Let me break it. God is your father. God is your what? Is your father. The father of what? God is the father of all spirits. Say all spirits. Come on, say all spirits. Which means there is no, fa there is no spirit without a source. There is no spirit without a father. Now, this is the problem of Lucifer. Now, you must understand that the word or the terminology Lucifer, it is not a bad name. Like the way you think. Lucifer, in fact, is a good name. You can give to your child. I'm telling you. The word Lucifer means the morning star. And that was the name that God Almighty as his father gave him before his fall. So the word Lucifer is not demonic. Until when he had fallen, that's when he became jabulous. Are you listening? From Lucifer, he became what? Say jabulous. Tell about jabulous. Tell about jabulous. Now, the word jabulous, it means the fallen one. The one who has fallen from the glory. The one who has rebelled against the fatherhood of God. Now, you must understand that God is a father of all spirits. Say all spirits. Come on, lift your hands. Say all spirits. So, there is no spirit that is allowed to be independent. There is no, I repeat again, whether evil spirit, whether good spirit, Every spirit has a father, and the father is God. You know, here this. So, God is the father of your spirit. That's the reason from the day when you open up your heart on the day of salvation or the day of your redemption, when you said, Lord Jesus, come inside my heart, you received the fatherhood of God. There was an adoption of your spirit. Are you listening to me here? Your spirit was adopted. When you were adopted, you now became the son of God. Praise God. It was because of that spiritual ado adoption that made you to become the son of God. That's the reason the Bible says, let's go to the book of uh, John. John chapter number one. John chapter number one. Now I'm going to be soft with you because I'm about to break your head. I'll break your head with the hammer of the wind. I will hammer you today. Are you there? 
John chapter number 1, verse 12. I want us to read it like we are students. Like we are students, we know how to read. Even, even if you don't know how to read, just do like... <laughs> Have you heard me? Amen. One, two, three, go. But as many as received him, to them... Listen, he... listen. As many as received him. Received who? The fatherhood of God. Amen. As many as received the fatherhood of God, as many received him, accepted him as their father. As their father. He gave them, he gave them, he gave them the ability. Are you listening to me here? Amen. He gave them the what? The ability. The ability. He gave them the Alos Paracletos. Oh, you're not hearing this. Amen. Are you listening to me here? He gave them the what? The Alos Paracletos. He gave them the standby power. The ability to become. The functionality to become. To become what? Sons of God. So they were not yet sons without the power to make them sons. Amen. You are not yet a son of God without the power to convert you. Amen. You are not hearing this. Amen. You are not yet a millionaire until that power that converts poor men to become. Oh. Amen. You know here in this. You will never become married without that power to become. Oh, you're not hearing this. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. That's the reason a lot of people they are trying. They are trying business. They are trying ministries. They are failing. Why? They have not understood the power how these things operate. So from the day when we accepted him as our father, we received an adoption to become the sons of what? The sons of God. Say, I am a son of God. Lift your hands. Say, I am a son of God. Say, I am a son of God. Say, God is my father. God is my father. Now, let me tell you, God is not God to me. Oh, you are not hearing this. Amen. You are not hearing this. He can be God to Satan. I repeat again. He can be God to Satan because Satan wants to overthrow God. But for me, he's my father. Amen. Are you listening to me here? Amen. There's a difference between God becoming your God and God becoming your father. Amen. When we say that God is your father, which means there is a spiritual relationship. Amen. Oh, you're not hearing this. Amen. Say spiritual relationship. Spiritual relationship. So as many, as many that received him, who? God the Father. He gave them the Alos Paracretos, the ability to become sons of God, which means in the Bible or spiritually, everyone is called a son. There is no female. When God is talking about sons, He's talking about everybody. Praise God. Amen. That's the reason there's no daughtership. You will never hear in the Bible daughtership where? There's only what? Sonship. Praise God. Now the Bible says as many as received him, God, their father, the father of their spirit, he gave them the ability to be called what? Sons of God. He gave them the license. It was because of that power that enabled them to have the license to be called sons of God. So God is the father of your spirit. How many people believe? Do you believe? Oh, do you believe? Do you believe that God is the father of your spirit? That's a reason for you to enter heaven. Jesus said something that is so profound. He said, there is nobody who can go to my father. There is nobody. Jesus also is not a spiritual street kid. Jesus is not an orphan. Oh, you are not hearing this. We have a lot of people in the church who are orphans, yet they are fathers that God has given them. Oh, you are not hearing this. Look, 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 look. Jesus is saying, there is no man who can go to my father. There is nobody who can talk to my father unless through me. So Jesus is trying to tell you that if you see me, you see the father. He's talking about DNA. Say 
say DNA? Do you know what it means, DNA? Let me break it. Oh, Shabalia Igaradosh. Let me take you to biology. <laughs> hey, are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Do you know it is possible for you to be traced or to trace all your relatives using your blood? We can trace even the children that we have never seen before. <laughs> using the what? The blood. Or using the methodology of DNA test. Now, DNA is simply a system where blood is checked or the pair blood. They do what? They pair blood. Are you listening to me here? They check, they check the similarities and the functionality of the blood. So for example, if I have a son called Angel, and whenever you look at Angel, if I say that Angel is not my son, they'll take me for DNA. They'll take the blood of Angel, and they'll take my blood, and they'll begin to screen it. Are you listening to me here? After they do the screen, they will check some similarities in the blood. That's a reason. It is very easy. Look, it is very easy for you to know your relatives. Do you know that blood talks? Do you know that? Blood can talk. So, if I refuse that angel is not my son, they'll take me for DNA, they'll check some similarities in the blood. And when they find that there is some common, common factors, they'll come up with a result. They say, uh-uh, sir, we have found out that you are the one, you are responsible of this child because of the pair. That's the reason from the day we receive the fatherhood of God, our contaminated blood, the blood of Adam, the Adamic blood inside us that had the virus of sin, it was cancelled and we received the blood of God. Now we have the DNA of God. That's the reason we can never be sick, we can never be poor, we can never lack. Why? In our DNA, there is no poverty. In our DNA, there is no lack and want. Are you hearing me? That's the reason if you, if you are poor, it's your own fault. Tell me, if you are poor, it's your own fault. Tell me, if you are poor, it's your own fault. Are you listening? Now, as many as received him, he gave them the what? The ability. The dominion. The standby power. To become. Come here. Come and sit. You are my wife. I'm the one who married you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, let's go back. As many that received him. Received who? God, your father. The father of what? Say the father of my spirit. Imagine that your spirit has a father. Your spirit has a father. And I hear people talking about, no me, I don't need a, a spiritual father. I will show you, wait. I will show you. I will show you. I will show you. And you understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God. So, listen. You have the DNA of God, which means the things that are found in God, they are found in you. Amen. Are you listening to me here? Amen. So the Bible says, as many as received him, he gave them the ability to become sons of God, even unto those that believed upon his name. Praise God. Amen. Now, God, the Father, he is the Father of what? Your spirit. Can I have, can I have a what? Can I have a... Give me... Give me, hurry up. Let's look at something.
Praise God. Now, your spirit. Now, do you know that your spirit, let me break it. Your spirit is the residence place of God. Huh? Do you know that God stays in your spirit? God, your father, stays in your spirit. And that process is called new creation. It's called what? Say new creation. When God Almighty begins to sit on your spirit, that process is called what? New creation. That's the reason the Bible says, if any man be in what? Hey, be in what? Be in what? Be in what? So it is not Jesus in you. It is you in... You're not hearing this. It is what? It is Jesus suffocating your small spirit. If any man be in what? In Christ Jesus. He's a what? He's a new creation. This is the process. So now, your spirit has been recreated by the spirit of your father. Oh, oh Shabbat. Help me too. Listen. Do you know that when a woman she's giving birth, she gives birth twice? <laughs> if you are a woman, when you are going for labor one, you give birth twice. Do you want to know? Do you want to know? Your spirit. Oh, who told you that the spirit does not give birth? Who told you that angels don't give birth? No hand on this. The Bible says he makes his angels ministering spirits. So angels are what? Spirits. Huh? Huh? Hey, angels are what? Angels are what? Who is the father of angels? God. The same way God is the father of your spirit. Also, God is the father of the spirit of angels. You are not understanding. Who told you that angels do not multiply? Because it is believed that angels don't multiply, isn't it? Is it true? Hey, is it true? There are some people, they're like, ah, Papa, what are you talking about? Do you know that angels multiply? Do you know that angels multiply? Angels are called what? Spirits, eh? Eh? They are called what? They are called what? Now I say that a woman when she's giving birth, she gives birth how many times? Twice. There is a parable one day. Look, look. They came to Jesus. They gave him a parable. He said, Master, there was a man who married a woman. And that man died unto the seventh one. On the day of resurrection, whose wife is she going to be? For and Jesus said, You people, you don't understand scriptures. Don't you know that when you are in heaven, you'll be like angels? Don't you know that when you are in heaven, you'll be like angels? Because in heaven there is no marriage, which means there is no procreation. Are you listening? Listen to me very well because this is a deep revelation. It is mind-boggling. Are you listening to me here? Now, Jesus said, don't you know that in heaven, you'll be like angels. In heaven, there is no marrying. So it is in heaven where there is no marriage. And making babies. You're not hearing this. You're not, you, it is in heaven where angels don't make babies. But when they come here on earth. When they come here on earth. They have the ability to impregnate you. The same way a man can do the work. You are not hearing this. In heaven they don't marry. They don't procreate. Here on the earth. In the book of Genesis chapter number 6. The Bible says then the Mephilims. The spirits. They entered in the daughters of men and bore children, spirits. 
So who told you that spirit don't give birth? Eh? Okay, what about the Holy Spirit? What about the Holy Spirit? Eh? The Holy Spirit did the work. Mary, mm, nine months. You are not hearing this. Nine months carrying the pregnancy. Even the Bible says, this is the pregnancy of the Holy Spirit. So who is the father, who is the father of Jesus? The Holy Spirit. The Bible says, she, she, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you and you will conceive a son of the Holy Spirit. So, angels multiply. When they come here, they can sleep with you. Do the work like a fellow man. You know, here it is. Let me leave it there because some of you be so confused. You are looking at me. You are looking at me like, Papa, what are you talking about? Angels multiply. Now, let me break it. I said, in heaven, there is no marriage. Here on the earth, there is marriage. Are you listening? Now, when you are giving birth as a woman, you give birth to how many things? Two things. Number one, your spirit must give birth to a fellow spirit. Your spirit must give birth to a fellow spirit. Otherwise, if your body gives birth without a spirit, it will be a body, dead body. That's the reason. <laughs> when your body gives birth only, without the full completion of the spirit, it will be a dead body. Which means that the full creation system or process was not completed. You gave birth to a dead baby because the spirit failed to give birth. So what is death? Death is a separation between the spirit and the body. So the spirit must give birth and the body must give birth. Are you listening? Now, the spirit that you have, it is the spirit from your father. That's the reason anyone who lies has the spirit of what? His father. The Bible says everyone who lies has the spirit of what? The father who is the devil. Are you listening to me here? So it is either the spirit that you have, it is the spirit of God or Jabulos. So from the day when you open up your heart, you say, Lord Jesus, come inside my heart. From that day, you received an adoption. God Almighty became the bishop, the overseer, the Lord of your spirit. Now, he does not live in mountains. He does not live in valleys. He does not live in trees. He lives inside you. Say, he lives inside me. Say, he lives inside me. So stop looking for God. Stop looking for what? He's already in you. Now, let me break it. father. Number one, fatherhood of God. Number two, spiritual father. Number three, normal father or your biological father. Now listen. God is your what? Is the father of what? Your spirit, God is a what? Is a bishop. Okay. Praise God. Is a what? Is a bishop. Is an overseer. He watches over your spirit. Praise God. So the responsibility of God over your spirit is to make sure that the Satan does not stay there. God watches over your spirit day 
at night so that your spirit must not be manipulated or contaminated. And you listen to me here. We are not physical bodies. We are spiritual entities that are living, occupying the body. Are you listening to me here? That's the reason you need to be so spiritual. The responsibility of why God stays in your spirit is to make you spiritual. You can never carry God in your spirit and never to be spiritual. God Almighty, the reason why He's staying in your spirit is to make you fire rise spiritually, to be spiritually alert, to be spiritually discerned. Uh, 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 sensitive it is useless to carry God and to die in an accident why is God sitting on your spirit because you must understand that Satan is looking for a seat on your spirit he's looking for what Say a seat. He wants to find room where he can stay. He wants to occupy your spirit. That's the reason. The reason why God occupies your spirit is to make you spiritually strong, spiritually grown up, to understand things of the spirit, not to become a spiritual dwarf. We have a lot of people, 17 years in church, they are spiritual dwarf. It is possible to come to church to be born again yet not to grow. It is possible to be in the press team you are born again yet you are not growing. For Look, for God to sit on your spirit is a free token. It's a free token. You did not do anything. He sat on you on the basis of you accepting him as a Lord and Savior. Are you listening to me here? Now, your responsibility it is to cultivate the relationship between you, your spirit and your God. Are you listening to me here? That's the reason when Adam, when Adam lost a spiritual connection, he became like an animal. You see, Adam naming animals, God is not opposing. The moment he was disconnected, his spirit was disconnected. He became a normal person. Listen, the day your spirit is disconnected from God, you are doomed. Tell me about the day when your spirit is disconnected from God. It does not matter your movement. You can be moving, yet you are dead. Praise God. So God is a what? Is a father of what? Your spirit. Say God is a father of my spirit. Now if God is the father of your spirit, you must understand the will of God and the agenda and the plan of God is to release a spiritual blessing. I repeat again, if God is the father of your spirit, his agenda and his plan, it is to release a spiritual blessing. Now, what is a blessing? <laughs> right, what is a blessing? A blessing is simply a divine budget of God. Right? The blessing is simply a divine budget of God for every person on earth. It is a budget. God has a budget to make you to be a blessed man. God has a budget to make your business to flourish. God has a budget to make your ministry expand. God has a budget to make whatever you touch to explode. He has a budget. But if you don't know the budget that he has for you, you'll be spiritual yet ignorant. 
So knowledge of the word, knowledge of the budget, knowledge of the blessing is what makes you triumph in life. It is not noise, it is knowledge. Knowledge is power. Let me tell you, the abundance of ignorance is simply opening a satanic embassy on your spirit. Abundance of ignorance is simply opening what? An embassy of the devil in your spirit. You know what it means, an embassy? A country in another country. So Satan begins to import his goods. HIV, cancer, tuberculosis, lameness, financial problem in your spirit. There is a spiritual blessing that you must get from God your father who is spirit. Say, I need a spiritual blessing. 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 Okay, right. This second point. What is a blessing? A blessing, it is a spiritual deposit of God, of, of God's utterance that creates physical manifestation. It is simply a spiritual deposit of God God's utterance, God's saying, God's mind that brings physical manifestation. In another way, the blessing is a pronunciation of a spiritual weight. Are you listening to me here? Not a normal weight. It is a spiritual weight that carries weight in the spirit to bring physical manifestation. That's the reason it is very important to understand that when you are a blessed man, no devil can curse you. Why? The blessing is higher than the curse. Say, I am blessed. It's a what? It's a deposit. It's God Almighty in the heavenly account having a mind to deposit in your spirit a word that will catapult you to another dimension. Listen to me. There is a word that God can say about your life and that word has the ability to open up doors, to take you in places that you have never been. Can I talk to somebody here? The Bible said the blessing of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. When, look, look, when God decides to bless you, the blessing is no material things. The blessing is not a car. The blessing is not a house. The Blessing is no suits. The blessing is no grammar. The blessing is a divine utterance in a man, ladies and gentlemen. Before you were born, there were utterances that were released about you. Are you listening? That's the reason I'm not afraid of a man who says you, uh, you, you will die. You, you don't know where God picked me from. You don't know. It is a what? A deposit. Are you listening to me here? It's God investing in your spirit. It's God confirming your spirit that you are a blessed man, that you are unguessable, that you are unstoppable. Are you listening to me here? That's the reason you must understand when you are blessed, no devil can curse you. No spirit can hinder you. Why? You are already released in your spirit. You appear in your destination before you start a journey. Blessed man, shake your neighbor, tell them I'm a blessed man. You can't kiss me, you can't stop me. Words have been released about me. I am not what you say I am, I am what God says I am. So there is a word released for you. Look, I told you that the blessing is simply what a divine. Deposit. Do you know what it means? A deposit. Huh? Taking your money. Huh? Taking your monology. Are you listening to me here? Say monology. Taking your what? Your monology. Hundred thousand billion. Hundred billion. Hundred US dollars. Putting them in the bag. God Himself taking it. You are like an ATM. Oh, 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 oh. You are like a what? An ATM. God is good on your ATM. He begins to insert money. To insert contracts, and you listen to me here. He took all the billions 
of this world and invested it, deposited in your spirit. You are a rich man. Even when, oh, listen, before I had money, I was a rich man. Oh, you know you are this. <laughs> Tell them, before I had money, I was a rich man. There was a spiritual deposit. Tell them, whatever you are seeing today, it happened a long time ago. There was a spiritual deposit. God said I am a millionaire. God said I am a rich man. God said my business will prosper. Surely it will prosper. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Lift your hand and shout hallelujah. God, as a minister of the gospel that you are not just an ordinary person. You are a person carrying fresh weight. Are you listening to me here? You are not just a non-entity. You are not just a coincidence. You are a person carrying a plan and a destiny. Are you listening to me here? God has said something about your destiny. Can I prophesy to you? After today your destiny will take a dramatic change. Say I receive. Your father, your spiritual, your spiritual father, your heavenly father, he has released what? Say a divine blessing. Say there is a deposit in my spirit. There's a deposit. a story of Balak and Balak. Read the book of uh, Numbers, chapter 22. Numbers. I want to show you when your spiritual heavenly father has released the blessing. <laughs> My God. I want to show you something. Numbers. Are you there? Read verse number one. Uh -huh. Numbers chapter 22 verse number 1 Then the Israelites traveled to the plains of Moab and camped along the Jordan across from Jericho Now Balak son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to Now listen Balak Balak by that time is not Balak Obama. Are you listening? Balak was the king of the Moabites, and the Moabites, these are descendants of Ishmael. Are you listening to me here? This is a descendant of Muslims. Are you listening to me here? That's where Islam is coming from. Now the Bible says, when Balak saw that Israel was flourishing and prospering, now who is Israel? Israel. His name was Jacob by that time. Are you listening to me here? And the Jacob was blessed by Jehovah. He fought with an angel. And the angel broke his hip. And the Bible says his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. And Israel meaning God has prevailed. Are you listening to me here? And the Bible says Balak. He was envying Israel. How he was doing well. And the Bible says he hired Balaam. Balaam was a prophet. Are you listening to me here? Even if when they hire a prophet to curse you, he does not work. I want to show you something. They hired Balaam. Balaam was a notorious prophet. He was so acidic in cursing people. He was hired because he was promised a land and a plot just to curse Israel. And the Bible says Israel was already a blessed man. And the Bible said, on the way, while Balaam was going to catch this man, in fact, he demanded for seven altars. Look at the, look, 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 look how heavy Israel was. They demanded seven altars to be built. Listen to me. You are too heavy to be cursed. You are, you are, you are not listening. I said you are too heavy to be cursed. <laughs> seven altars were raised. Just to guess 
one man. Ah. When a spiritual blessing has been released for your destiny, it does not matter how many people are against you. It does not matter who has gone ahead of you. It does not matter who is looking for your head. It does not matter who is looking for your downfall. God Almighty, He has already blessed you. says when Balaam was hired you know why he was hired because he was promised he was promised a land and the, and and uh, and uh, some money foolish prophet and the Bible said on the way he was he was riding a donkey busy celebrating busy enjoying as he was riding the donkey preparing to go and cash a blessed man that day God decided to close the eyes of a prophet and God gave the eyes of a prophet to a donkey can I prophesy even donkey shall speak for you are uh, you not hearing this even donkey shall defend you even donkey shall say you are a blessed man even rats in your house they shall say you are a blessed woman are you listening to what I'm talking about say I am a blessed man I am a blessed woman my blessing is settled my house is settled my career is settled say I am blessed in my coming in I am blessed in my going out say I receive it God removed the eyes of the prophet and he gave them to a what? to a donkey a donkey began to prophesy do you know why you will not die because the rats in your house they are waiting for you because they are waiting for meat and food you are not listening, you are not listening, you are not listening, you are not listening. Sit down, sit down. Do you know why some of you must not die? Eh? Cockroaches are waiting for you. You are not hearing this. Cockroaches are living for the sake of you. You will never see a cockroach in a house where there's no food though. The reason why there's a lot of cockroaches, they know that they are depending on you. They are dependents. That's the reason you must not die. Because there's a lot of people that are waiting for you. Can I prophesy? I declare and declare, Jehovah will defend you. Jehovah will use even dogs to defend you. Say I receive.
carry what? Kerosene or crude oil. Yeah. I carry fresh oil. Yeah. My eyes, fresh oil. My body, fresh oil. My suit, fresh oil. My church, fresh oil. I sit in fresh oil. I talk in fresh oil. I move in fresh oil. My hair, fresh oil. My children, fresh oil. My wife, fresh oil. My church, fresh oil. It 
was written as a blessed man. It is he is uncashable. A blessed man, he cannot be sick. A blessed man, he cannot be poor. The prophet was going to kiss a blessed man. And God said, Because of your stubbornness, I take away your eyes. And God took the eyes and gave them to a to a donkey. Donkey. Say, I'm God's donkey. Tell them, I am God's donkey. He rides me. I am not worthy to see in the spirit because of the blessing. The blessing has qualified me to take, to see what prophets see. What, look, the blessing is a spiritual what? Deposit of God in your spirit, in your account, in your marriage, in your ministry. Listen to me. What brings men to my church? It is not how I look like. What brings men to my church? It is not how the church is arranged. What brings people in my church is the amount of blessing that God has released in my spirit. As I'm here, I am releasing. I own Parasu I release a blessing. I release a blessing. The blessing will go to your destination. It will welcome you. Say I receive it. Sit down. When God has blessed you, He causes those that hate you to love you. He will make your enemies to be at peace with you. Your enemy. Your enemies will be paralyzed. In order for them to attack you, they will laugh with you. Have you ever seen a lion living with an empty lump? That's what God does when you are a blessed woman, a blessed man. He causes that ugly man, that Goliath, to come and marry you. That what? Goliath. You know what? You know, I just feel like, you know what? Uh, my heart. He doesn't know how to propose. He said, but you know what? In the night, uh, I feel the anointing. He has never felt the anointing. That day, he's feeling that. Why? The blessing is able to provoke. Are you listening to me here? I prophesy to 11 people. Those who look down on you, they shall look up to you. In 2014, in 2004, the Lord appeared to me. I was a poor man, doing no poverty. My legs, my legs, my shoes were saluting heaven. I was putting on a green suit to the point that when I walked, they called me Pastor Green. Are you listening to me here? Why? I was not a blessed man. But now, my name was, my name was changed from somebody who was not worthy to somebody who is worthy. Lift your hand and shout hallelujah. Sit down. The blessing of God maketh rich. The blessing of God has the ability to decorate your destiny. The blessing of God has the ability to decorate your future. The blessing of God has the ability to take you in places where your uncle, your father, your great grandfather has never been. Can I prophesy? The blessing of God will carry you from where you are to the place you have never been. Say I receive it. I am, look, look. I am enjoying the spiritual blessing. When a man is blessed, people can leave you. Give them time. Give them time. Give them time. Those who leave you, they are not meant for you. Blessing attracts devils. Blessing. This morning, I felt I could not sleep. I could not sleep. I woke up zero three. Zero three. I could not sleep. I was troubled. I felt pain. I said, Lord, have mercy on your servant. The burden is too heavy. I can't lift it. And the Lord says, Thou art a blessed man. I will make 
a way where a way has never been made. I will create a way where a way cannot be created. I will free connection that you have never seen. Stop, 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 stop trying, stop trying to mingle around with people that don't believe you. Go around with people that believe in your God, that believe in your ability, that believe in your calling, that know that God has said you are a blessed man and they are able to support you. Say I receive it. Say I receive it. So the blessing is a what? It's a spiritual deposit. Of God in a man, in a business, in a ministry. Every ministry has a spiritual deposit of the blessing. Look, your ministry did not just start without hearing from God. There were there was words that God told you one by one. There was do's and the don't. He told you this is how it will be. This is where you will go. Those are spiritual deposits, laws and regulation, insight, instruction that were given to you by God. Those are spiritual deposits. What is the blessing? The blessing. These are impartations of God's intention on his children. Those are impartations of God on his children. Those are impartations of God's intentions on his children. God has got the intention. God has a plan to make you to be a tycoon. He has a plan to heal you. He said, for I have a plan for you, declares the Lord. Plans to make you a rich man. Plans to make you heal. Plans to make you married. Plans to open doors for you. Plans to make you to be at the head and never the tail. He has an intention and that intention can never die. impartation of God's intention of his children. He has an intention to do what? To make you a crazy fire rise, atomic ma laser break man of God. You become like a laser break. They touch you, you cut them. Are you listening to me here? That's what God wants to make you. An elephant does not need prayer point to poop. The size of his poop is because he's big. You know, here it is. An elephant does not need prayer point to poop. The size of his poop is because of his size. And you listen to me here. How can you be a child of God? How can you be a blessed man yet remove result like a, 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 a cursed man? The blessing is an impartation of God's intention on his children. He has an intention to do what? To bless you. To make whatever you touch to be a blessing. To make your feet to be a lamp. To be a source of blessing unto others. Are you listening to me here? God wants to make you to be a blessing. God wants to make your his intention. You must ask yourself why God brought you here. embarrassment. God did not bring me in South Africa to make my name to be in shame. He brought me to glorify me. He brought my life in South Africa to make rejection to turn to projection. To make shame to be glory. Ha! There were better places than South Africa and the Lord said you will go to South Africa. Why? I have an intention to prosper you. God made you to marry that man. He has an intention. Whether he's a drunkard, it's God's intention. Keep him. To God is good. <laughs> to God is good. He said, he that finds a wife, finds a good thing. Whether she beats you is a good thing. <laughs> God 
does not choose wise for people. He doesn't. He was blamed in Genesis. He said, okay, Adam, Adam, what you have done? From today, you begin to choose for yourself. Say, he that finds a wife, finds a good thing. So if you find a wife, to God, is good. If she's bad, she drinks. To God, he says, it's good. She beats you. To God, say, ah, congratulations. You chose very well. It's a nice fit for you. You come from church, she takes your clothes, she puts, she puts them in water. God is clapping and says, congratulations. You refused my plans for you. Now you want your own plan. As a result, God has given us the ability to choose. He says, I put before you death and life. I advise you to choose life. So God has an intention. And look, God cannot make you to get married to that man without the plan and the purpose. The Bible says he has not got the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. Which means whatever God does with the seed is for germination. So the blessing is what? Is God's impartation and intention for his children. What is his intention? What is his impartation? What is impartation? Impartation is simply a transfer of divine resources, divine currency from a higher velocity place to a lower place. There's a transfer of the divine blessing. There's a transfer of who God is into your life. Are you listening to me here? It's an impartation. You are imparted. Are you listening to me here? A woman, do you know that any, any woman does not have pregnancy? When a woman is pregnant, they will ask her, who is the owner? She was imparted by what? She was what? Hey, she was imparted by someone. So there is no woman who can get pregnant on herself. Every pregnancy, every manifestation of the body spitting, big nose, big leg, big stomach, is because of the process of impartation. So a woman responds because she has been imparted by a seed. Are you listening to me here? There is no way God can impart you and not to change in size. There's no way God can impart you with wisdom and your ministry to remain the same. No way. It's an impartation. And that impartation, it changes your size. The Bible says, Jesus grew in wisdom and stature. Why? Because there was an ingredient of wisdom. Jesus. Say impartation. I'm not saying impartation, no. I'm not saying umpa. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Turn but not to mumpa. Impartation. Say impartation. Turn about impartation. Hey, turn about impartation. There are too many kinds of impartation. There's mumpa. Mumpa. Let's look at number three. Number two, the blessing is a is is an is an impartation of God's intention on his children. Number three, the blessing is a transfer of the divine providence, provision of God for his children. The blessing is a transfer of the divine providence of God for his children. Whenever you are a blessed man, you don't look for things. Listen to me. Whatever you are looking for, when you are a blessed man, God brings them to you. He makes them to be at your disposal. Why? You don't look for money. You don't look for cars. He causes those things that are not to be. I will never suffer in ministry. I will break legacy. I've made up my mind. I said, two years from now, come and see me. Wait, come and see me. You will see even my shape will change. I will have a pot belly. The pot belly of money to cause the devil kiss the transformer. Are you listening to me here? My pot belly, it will be very, very big. And I'll be putting on a suit. I'll be scratching my stomach like this. 
because money will be too much. Can I prophesy? I declare to you, money will be too much to the point that you will not count it. Say I receive it.
place in the divine budget of God for today's living. He's getting what? He's 